senile, hypocritical Democrats, and gentlemen. Recently, Nancy Pelosi, during the whole uh, budget shutdown, uh, defund Obamacare, uh, let's raise the debt ceiling for the 375,000th time, and the same people who were castigating Bush for wanting to do that are now accusing the Republicans of holding a, a national debt increase hostage because we spent too much under Bush, and Bush raised the, one of the national debt raised, and he got it, and now we want to do the same thing, and it wasn't okay for him, but it's okay for Obama. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi thinks, although everyone is committed to reducing the deficit, yeah, right, very few are, there's simply no more cuts to make. There is no more cuts to make, she said. Uh, let's hear it from Fish Face in her own words. But again, I just have to point out that Pre President Clinton, uh, President Bush, President Reagan, and this president have all negotiated the debt ceiling and given up something for that. So why now is because it just, no, we can't do this? Because the cupboard is there. There's no more cuts to make. It's really important that people understand that. Now is because it just, the no, cupboard is there. There's no more cuts to make. Now is because it just, the no, cupboard we can't do this. is there. There's no more cuts to make. And that's not it uh, for San Fran Nan's uh, senile stupidity. Imagine if uh, George W. Bush or Denny Hastert when he was Speaker or Boehner uh, made this following comment. President Obama said this week that we don't have an immediate debt crisis and that it's going to be in a sustainable place for the next 10 years. Do you agree with his statement this week? Well, I believe that we're in a path to reduce the, uh, the deficit, and I would say that uh, uh, I, I would, I, I count me as one who would say I want us to be on a path uh, uh, to um, balance the budget in a number of decades. You can't do it in one decade, not after what we have been through. President Clinton, coming out of his administration, we were on a path to, to uh, a, a serious deficit and debt reduction after the uh, uh, explosion of the debt and the, the Bush years and the downturn in our economy and the meltdown of our financial institutions and the loss of revenue that that engendered, we're at a place where the deficit is much bigger and in 10 years you can't do it without hurting the middle class. But in terms of uh, a path to balance, hopefully to surplus, uh, uh, that's what I, uh, what I would like to see. Of course, Nancy uh, San Fran Nan conveniently left out the fact that uh, for three quarters of Clinton's presidency, the Republicans controlled Congress, and the executive can't spend a dime without congressional approval. It would be a team effort. So just like when uh, spending was reduced significantly under Eisenhower in the last, that was the last time we paid down the national debt in nominal dollars, Democrats control Congress most of the time. Of course, uh, Eisenhower wasn't saddled with the welfare state and Medicare yet, but nonetheless, the credit would have to go to his congressional Democrats. So Pelosi left that out. She also leaves out the fact that, uh, and yes, Bush spent way too much, and especially uh, on uh, our foreign policy, uh, you know, the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan were extremely expensive and other o overseas contingency operations, which I will go over shortly. Uh, but uh, Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid chiefly are growing at uh, a unstoppable rate exponential rate, it's, it's out of control, and uh, it's getting harder to balance the budget unless we reform those programs, so she leaves that out. But of course, her sheep believe it because she tells them what they want to hear. They're uneducated and they do no research. So now we're going to go over, since so she says there's nothing left to cut, hmm, that puts her in a precarious position. That makes a lot of you progressives out there, you're gonna have to defend her or throw her under the bus. We'll see which you do, we'll see where you opt for. So uh, we'll go over a number of uh, easy cuts that could be made uh, in the budget. Before we get to the main event, see the two videos uh, up on your screen where I refuted Nancy Pelosi on her stupidity uh, related to all this Keynesian spending. She thought unemployment benefits and food stamps uh, stimulate the economy. I don't think so does not. It doesn't create wealth. It just moves around and her pledge in uh, right before the 2006 election, she said, if you elect Democrats and put Democrats in control of Congress, we will stop the Iraq war 
you uh, clowns at Code Pink, uh, you're pawns. Uh, you got fooled there, guys. You got you got used. So uh, I guess the joke's on you. And no, the Iraq War did not end. As she said, uh, they would end it, and it didn't. So uh, Congress didn't hold Bush's feet to the fire and uh, pass funding that can only be directed towards the withdrawal. So you were used as a pawn. Now let's get to, uh, she, Pelosi says there's nothing left to cut. So let's go to, uh, I got all the links underneath as per usual. Uh, let's look at the Department of Defense. Couldn't find the actual OCO spending for fiscal year 2012. So I went uh, with this on uh, the president's budget. And you can see here, overseas contingency operations in fiscal year 2011, 158 billion. It's estimated to go down, so he's doing a good job there. Hussein's doing a good job there, pulling them out, sl uh, slowly uh, ending those wars that he said he would end years ago, but oh well. Voted twice as a senator to end the Iraq war early, but didn't do it as president. And the estimate fiscal year 2012, 115 billion. Fiscal year 2013, 88 billion, which may or may not hold up because he's doing that Asian pivot. If you remember uh, and see my video, uh, Hussein versus George W. Bush uh, troop deployments. Hussein, uh, December 11th of last year, or December, end of December last year, end of 2012, still had uh, 253,000 U.S. troops spread all across the world. So he's kind of still an interventionist doing this Asian pivot that's coming up where we're going to pivot to Asia and get our, some of our troops out of Europe and the Middle East and, and start a Cold War with China. I'm not sure those figures will hold up. So Hussein's done a pretty bad job. Of course, he got the war in Libya, which was not congressionally authorized. Uh, Pelosi and Hussein wanted to go into Syria, and Hussein said, well, I don't need Congress's permission, but I'm going to ask for it anyway. Well, what happened? Public opinion stopped you. So this idiot Pelosi, there's nothing left to cut. Well, we're still involved in NATO. Uh, and we still have troops and bases all over the world in wealthy countries that can defend themselves. So Nancy says, we don't need to cut that. So you're going with the George W. Bush foreign policy intervention? Really? Nancy, nothing left to cut? You know, you're supposed to be brilliant. You probably know more about the budget than I do. You know more about the minutia of it, but I can look this stuff up um, and find out that uh, you're full of crap. So I don't know whether she, you know, if you sheep fell for it, shame on you. So there's a, uh, a lot of defense spending uh, that we could cut. I'll also link to a, uh, this since this pertains to uh, Pentagon spending, ending the nuclear triad, an article by Christopher Preble, where the United States, instead of deploying our nuclear weapons, on bombers, land-based ICBM launchers, and submarine-launched uh, ballistic missiles, we could go to simply a system where they're all on submarines. Because we have a large enough Navy, I mean, it could be downsized because, you know, I don't think our mission is to patrol the South China Sea and protect Japan and South Korea and Australia and all over the Pacific and Indian Ocean and Atlantic and just have our Navy everywhere just our Navy big enough to protect the Continental 48, Alaska, and Hawaii. But if we went to a, uh, you know, these Ohio-class submarines have got more firepower on them that's been launched in the history of warfare, so they are uh, harbingers of death, uh, you know, <laughs> I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, nobody's going to mess with us. It will be enough of a deterrent. We could go to just simply, uh, if we need to launch a ballistic missile attack, only on submarines. And that would save roughly $20 billion annually. Uh, in this day and age, yes, having our ballistic missile launch systems totally devoted to just in, on submarines, that's, that would save $20 billion annually, and it would still be a deterrent. Uh, you know, if somebody's a psychopath and they attack us, you know, but having that capability there, it would save money, and we would still have enough to be a deterrent because uh, there, there's plenty of firepower, so... Uh, there's another thing San Fran Nan uh, left out. Surprise, surprise. Let's go to the uh, Department of Homeland Security or Inland Security or Homeland Stupidity. Now, if we shut this down, and we should shut the entire Department of Homeland Security down because it's more intrusive. 
than anything, and it does more bad than good. If we shut it down completely, uh, there's a lot of overlap, and uh, like with the Coast Guard here, some of their spending. So if we shut it down completely, we wouldn't save $45.7 billion overall because there is some overlap and some of those agencies would still get that money. So I'm not sure how much exactly we would save, but we'd probably be, uh, our privacy would be saved too. So I'm, I reckon we'd save over $20 billion overall there uh, because we don't need the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, just another bureaucracy on top of bureaucracy, so that should be shut down. Completely, but Nancy Pelosi, there's nothing to cut. Nothing to cut. So, yeah, I guess those fusion centers, nothing to cut, folks. Uh, it's all good. Uh, the uh, next order of business, National Science Foundation, as you can see, they are not starved for funds. And most of their funds, uh, most of these grants given out by the National Science Foundation, funded with your tax dollars, are politically motivated. Uh, a report released on May 26, 2000, 2011 by Senator Tom Coburn that exposed wasteful, wasteful spending Excuse me, at the National Science Foundation. The report found $3 billion in mismanagement with more than $1.2 billion of NSF's total budget of $6.9 billion for fiscal 2010 squandered due to waste, fraud, and duplication. Uh, we have, let's see, they wasted $65 million taxpayer money on silly and dumb projects such as $1.5 million to build a laundry folding robot. Wow, with the ability to fold a towel in 25 minutes, 500 grand to study shrimp running on a treadmill. I'm sure you heard about that one. 300000 to study personal relationships built through Farmville on Facebook. Uh, they're holding on one. They're holding on to $1.7 billion in expired grant money, which they should give back to the taxpayers because... because uh, Excuse me, I'm getting upset here. It's not their damn money. Uh, 19 million lost to fraud by employees, universities, and con contractors, as well as num numerous examples of fraudulent uh, behavior. So, in sh in closing, you know the National Science Foundation again not uh, starved for funds. If it was shut down, the world would not. We would not see the apocalypse. The apocalypse would not be ushered in if the National Science Foundation was shut down because most of it is a waste. It's garbage. Uh, nothing to cut. Department of Agriculture. Here's another good one. And they waste a lot of money as well. In fact, I would argue that the Department of Agriculture is, it should be the, called the Department of Food Stamps. Because that's all it does. D dole out food stamps to, you know, and buy votes. Here, you vote for me and I'll give you food stamps. See how I pit the haves and the have-nots against each other? Vote for me. It's all a handout. I don't think it's constitutional, but they did invest $6.1 billion in renewable and clean energy and environmental improvements to spur the creation of high-value jobs. Yep, like ethanol, that's really successful. All those clean coal projects the government's endeavored in, uh, those went belly up. And I know the progressives were saying, well, we don't like coal anyway. It's, I'm not arguing whether coal's good or not. It's not a good economic investment. Wind and solar again. If it's gonna, if it's going to uh, succeed, it should stand on its own. Uh, that includes f subsidizing nuclear power plant construction. Uh, yeah, crop insurance, commodity credit corporation, food and nutrition service. There's your food stamps, ladies. Rural development liquidating accounts. This is w ridiculous. So the Department of Agriculture, run by my former governor. Tom Dilsack uh, is a big money hole as well. And at the end, I'll go over the uh, trajectory of the, the, some of these departments of over the last several years. Department of Housing and Urban Development is the administration's goal to end chronic homelessness. Yes, if we throw enough money at it, like the war on poverty started in 1965, folks, and poverty has been stopped. The trillions that we spent on combating poverty has stopped poverty out of wedlock births are down to about what? 1%? Oh, wait, they're not. And poverty hasn't been cured. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Federal Housing Administration will insure $149 billion alone in mortgage loans in 2013. So. And this is just the FHA. This doesn't count Franny May and Freddie Mac. FHA financing was used for 37% of home purchase loans in 2010, with 60% of African American and 59% of Hispanic borrowers who purchased homes using FHA. Yes! 
It also is an important financing source for first-time homeowners with low credit scores to get ninja loans, no income, no job, no assets, 56% of whom used FHA-insured financing in 2009, 2010 to get no money down, adjustable rate mortgages that they will default on later, and you will be on the hook for it. And the FHA will need a bailout. Uh, I hate to break it to you people, at least you people who do, do care about the taxpayer. You schlubs and schmucks out there on the dole won't. FHA will need a bailout, mark my words. Department of Transportation, there's nothing to cut though, folks. Nothing to cut. The Constitution allows the federal government to establish post offices and post roads. So the interstate highway system established under Eisenhower, that doesn't necessarily mean the government's the best actor to do it. You can have private ownership of roads. That's not illegal and it has worked. But it is constitutional. But look at this. Department of Transportation has decided that transit systems, like urban mass transit, high-speed rail, railways and runways are now post roads for some reason. They're going to spend $2.7 billion in 2013 and $47 billion over the six years to develop high-speed passenger rail corridors and improve inner-city inner city passenger rail service to significantly enhance the national rail network. Then they're spending a billion dollars for an, uh, ne the next generation air transportation system. Canada's uh, air traffic control is privatized. And then we're reducing funding for airport grants by over 900 million, focusing federal support on smaller airports. That's called the uh, Essential Air Service Program, where jerkwater podunk airports that get one plane every week make sure they get a bunch of money so they can keep running. Because that's definitely a good for the taxpayer. And as you can see, the Federal Department of Transportation has not been starved of funding either. And I will go over uh, exact funding for urban mass transit that the federal government engages in in the form of grants to states is a lot of it. Yeah, that's that's definitely a post war. Then you got the Department of Justice, and a lot of this money is wasted. Just think if we stop fighting the war on drugs. But don't worry, there's nothing left to cut. It doesn't mean I like drugs. I don't like drugs. But if you're going to destroy your life, it doesn't mean you can go get stoned out of your gourd and drive a car. But a lot of our incarceration fees are people, nonviolent criminals in jail for doing nothing but smoking pot or snorting coke. I would seriously wouldn't recommend snorting cocaine. Seriously. But uh, we spend a lot of money on the international war on drugs, too. And we spend a lot of money on our war on drugs, and then we have to feed and clothe the people we put in prison for just smoking pot, victimless crimes. So, but there's nothing left to cut. Nothing left to cut, folks. I will also tell you, uh, and that screenshot will be up now, Hussein's administration is attempting to reclassify as much discretionary spending as mandatory to avoid compliance with the sequester. So they're trying, they're taking, uh, rebasing some entries as mandatory and are not included in any 2012 discretionary levels in the 2013 budget because they want to try to circumvent it. So let's go over uh, quickly. Outlays by agency, you can see the Department of Agriculture. Uh, this is all nominal dollars. is not starved, not starved for money. The Department of Education is another one that should be shut down. Uh, see the relevant playlist. Uh, my education, public education is a failure playlist. Go see that playlist. Uh, the Federal Department of Education is not only unconstitutional, it is a complete joke and ineffective, and it's a big money hole. But no, we got to have free education. It works so well. If you're an inner city black person, you're definitely doing well under our public education system. So, uh, and don't, whatever you do, make sure you stop those scholarship tax credit programs where people can donate, freely, vol voluntarily donate money to a private school, whether parochial or not, their discretion and get a tax credit for it. Because, and that did win in court, so you get, you uh, progresso turds lost that one. Uh, the Department of Energy was supposed to be temporary and deal with the oil crisis in the 70s. Well, the fracking boom had nothing to do with the Department of Energy. All the Department of Energy does is waste money. And I've got several examples of that, if any of you progressives want to take me on. Just bring it. There's nothing left to cut, though. Nothing left to cut. National Science Foundation, there's a specific funding for them. 
and I've got all the the tables up there you know you can go look at this for yourself international development and humanitarian assistance well we're blowing over 20 billion dollars a year on that that's so we can rebuild third world cesspools and make them feel good some of them Islamic who hate our guts and then come to us when they need one of their dictators bombed and then we go over there and rebuild uh, the country so yeah great but there's nothing left to cut Nothing left to cut. Community development, area and regional development, disaster relief and insurance, unconstitutional, waste of money. Those are, uh, if I remember right, uh, it was just outlays by, that wasn't a state grant. You got the Universal Service Fund, yeah, started under Reagan. That's the morphed uh, into the big Obama phone thing. Uh, that's not needed. I'm sorry. Cell phone service is not a right. I don't know where you get that in the Congress's enumerated powers. It's not right. And again, community and regional development. Uh, that's a lot of money there. Look at all. Look at all these hundreds of billions of dollars I've found that we can cut. But there's nothing left to cut. Outlays to states for renewable energy, yeah, ethanol, clean coal, nu uh, subsidizing nuclear power, all those uh, projects. The government. Uh, disaster. Yeah, Salandra and all these other green energy programs. Salandra is just the tip of the iceberg, though, folks. They're wasting a lot of money there, well over $2 billion a year. And then you got the airport, uh, Central Air Service Program is part of this. Jerkwater Airports and No Man's Land, Alaska get a lot of money. That'd be like building a super Walmart in a jerkwater town of 100 people. And then having all the other Walmarts that make money subsidize it. It doesn't make much sense, but we do it anyway. Urban mass transportation get grants. Unconstitutional and inefficient. Look at all the money we waste there. We could cut that. Uh, outlays is uh, table 12.3 again. Look at all these uh, agricultural. It's over a billion a year. All this crap they grant to states. Uh, fire protection grants. Those don't work anyway. we got to make sure everybody's got broadband, too. That's a right. That's right there in Article 1, Section 8. Thou shalt have broadband connection. Uh, HUD's, HUD itself should just be shut down, but for the sake of argument, here's the waste they uh, facilitate give, uh, in their grants to states. Neighborhood Stabilization Program. I don't know what we do without that. So that's it, folks. Have a nice day. Nancy Pelosi's a dumbass. Do you progressives, do you agree with her? There's nothing left to cut. Or are you going to throw her under the bus? Have a nice day. Because the no, we cupboard can't do this. is there. There's no more cuts to make. It's really important that people understand that.